Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this topic is UPS that is uninterruptible power supply. In this session, we will discuss how UPS works that means basic block diagram of UPS, its types that is online UPS and offline UPS. As the name indicates, it is uninterruptible power supply means whenever the AC mains fails at that time, the UPS is used to provide the required supply. So this is the block diagram of UPS. At the input side, we are applying 230 volt input signal that this is AC input signal. First block is rectifier. As the name indicates, it converts AC signal into DC signal. Then output of rectifier is applied to the UPS batteries. Actually, number of UPS batteries are used. Battery is 12 volt DC battery. The number of batteries are connected in series. So it is called string of batteries. Then output of this battery, it is as I said, it is containing a string of batteries. Output of these batteries is applied to the inverter. As the name indicates, see, output of this battery is DC. So we want to convert back this signal into the AC. So we are using inverter, which is DC to AC converter. Output of this inverter is given to step up transformer because again, we want to generate 230 volt AC output. So the output of this step up transformer will be 230 volt AC output. So whenever AC mains fails, then due to this block diagram, again, you are getting 230 volt AC at the output side. If some reason, due to some reasons, this UPS fails, then one static bypass switch is connected. So you can well bypass all these blocks and the Apply, appliance is directly connected to the 230 volt input. So this is about the block diagram of UPS. The next part is online UPS. So this is the block diagram uh, for online UPS. As the name indicates, the connection, I mean UPS is always connected to the main supply. Look at the block diagram. This is AC mains. Its output is given to the rectifier as the name indicates it rectifies the uh, signal that means converts it into DC. Then we are using one DC filter and its output is given to the charge control unit. This charge control unit is directly connected to the, to the battery. So charging of battery is controlled whenever the power supply is getting connected. At the same time, so whenever the charging of battery is going on at the same time, this output of battery is given to the inverter because we again want to convert DC signal into AC and output of inverter is applied to the AC mains and then it is given to the AC load. This is the normal way of operation. That means in normal cases, the mains is always connected and charging is also taking place parallelly. But whenever there is a failure of power, in that case, there is no switching action required. But uh, whenever the power fails, that means there is no AC main supply, then this circuit will be off. I mean, uh, there won't be any connection because AC is off, but the battery has stored energy and this battery is directly connected to the inverter, then to the filter and uh, then to the AC load. So power supply is continuous. So you can say ideally there is zero switching time and this particular uh, UPS is called online UPS. Next part is offline UPS. As the name indicates, uh, this UPS, I mean inverter will be connected if and only if there is a failure of power. In normal operation, there won't be any connection of inversion. So this is the block diagram of offline UPS. It is very much similar to the block diagram of online uh, UPS apart from small differences. AC mains is under normal circumstances, AC mains is applied directly to the static switch and to the AC load. That means AC load is operated uh, directly by the AC mains under normal circumstances whenever there is a continuous uh, input power. Same time, this power is again uh, from the AC mains, it is again applied to the rectifier. That means this, this is the normal operation. The power directly goes to the static switch and then to the AC load. At the same time, under normal circumstances, same power input AC power is applied to the rectifier, then to the DC filter, then charge control unit and it will be used to charge the battery. But under normal circumstances, not it is not like online uh, UPS. In this case, 
this inverter will not be connected and it will not draw it will not take out any current from the battery whenever or when the ac mains is on now under the circumstances of power failure this static switch takes a major role this directly transfers within 5 milliseconds ideally this transfers the control to the lower part and now this this path will be discarded this path will be discarded but the battery was initially charged so this inverter will take out the current from the battery whenever there is a failure of power and and th this inverter will take out the current from the battery then it will be applied to the ac filter and then through the static switch it will be applied to the ac load since under normal circumstances inverter is not connected directly like the online ups this type of U ups is called offline ups now next part rather last part of this unit is electric vehicle batteries that is ev batteries from the exam point of view the first thing related to ev batteries is we can expect the question like what are the performance parameters of ev batteries that is electric vehicle batteries so we'll discuss different performance parameters first is cell voltage basically this ev battery is used to convert chemical energy into electrical energy and it produces emf that is electromotive voltage electromotive force so this produced emf is between the two electrodes and it is usually in the range of 3 to 3.2 volts now whenever cell discharges then emf is reduced and whenever the charging of cell takes place then emf is increased next is ampere hour capacity very simple to remember it is ampere hour that means it is it is multiplication of time and current because ampere is the unit of current so this is multiplication of constant discharge current and time for which voltage reduces this downward arrow indicates reduces voltage reduces be below the final value there is some typical final value so the time for which voltage reduced below that uh, uh, typical final value and the constant discharge uh, current is called ampere hour capacity related to this there is one more term which is ampere hour efficiency ah efficiency which is ratio of ampere hour discharge to the ampere hour charge next watt hour efficiency it is again simple definition it is ratio of energy supplied by battery during discharging to the energy supplied by battery during charging operation next reserved capacity for every battery there is certain reserved capacity so it is defined as the time for which battery tolerates a current drain without dropping the terminal voltage it means without affecting the terminal voltage how much current drain is possible that is related to reserved capacity of ev batteries next energy density it is simple amount of energy stored in the battery per cubic meter that means per volume of the battery so it is expressed in uh, watt hours per meter cube state of charge it is soc so it represents amount of stored energy with respect to the total energy storage capacity of the battery next depth of discharge that is do d depth, depth of discharge so it is the battery capacitor that is discharged with respect to the maximum capacity of the battery cycle life it is again simple how many times the battery is getting charged and discharged before the battery reaches to a predetermined criteria like predetermined energy levels and last parameter is self discharge so it represents the self discharging capacity of the battery whenever there is no load that is under zero load conditions next part is modes of charging of ev batteries from the exam point of view you may expect the question like this what are the different modes of charging ev so there are basically four modes mode 1 it is plugged in normal outlet and uh, the specifications for single phase are 16 amperes current 230 volts mode 2 it is plugged in the standard uh, outlet with a control pilot function and it also includes the personal protection system the specifications for a single phase are 32 amperes and 250 volt it is usually preferred for residential use mode 
In this case, the charging of EV takes place in the EV charging stations. It is used for control and communication applications. All the three modes converts AC to DC and it controls the battery charging rate. Mode 4, in this case, DC EV uh, supply equipment is used for the charging purpose. The charger is in the wall box and it converts AC to DC. It is used for commercial applications. Next and last part of this unit, architecture of EV battery charger. So this diagram shows architecture of EV battery charger. It has uh, two parts. One, we can use off-board charging system or second, you can use on-board charging system. Both the charging system consists of major blocks that is AC to DC converter. Here, uh, in case of off-board system, AC grid is applied at the input side, then AC to DC converter is used. This is isolation capacitor. Then again, DC to DC converter is used and through connector, the charging of battery is done. In case of onboard charging charger, again, AC socket is shown, then AC to DC converter, coupling capacitor and again, DC to AC conversion system. And this output of DC to DC converger, converter is applied to the EV battery. Now for onboard system, front end converter, this is the front end converter in both the cases, AC to DC conversion, this front end converter has power factor correction system. So it can, as the name indicates, it can correct the power factor. It shows high, it gives high power factor and low harmonic distortions. Then AC to DC conversion. For AC to DC conversion, we can use multi-level diode bridge for efficient operation. I mean, to get more efficiency. Then DC to DC converter. That means this conversion. We can use ZCS or ZVS. That is zero crossing uh, switching system and uh, zero current switching system and zero voltage switching system. So these are the resonant conver converters used for DC to DC conversion. In case of outboard system, the blocks are same, but outboard system, as the name indicates, is outside the vehicle. So it has high power rating. Uh, this is high power rating charger and it uses faster battery charging. So this is about the architecture of EV battery charger. So dear students, that's it for this series. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this series.